morning, uh, Brother President John De Paver, uh, IPAG Brother Lim Boon Heng, uh, Brother Kang Kim Yong, Manpower Minister, Brother Stephen Lee, and uh, delegates, observers, uh, management partners, friends from uh, government agencies, uh, welcome to our delegate conference. Now, the last time we met was uh, two years ago, and over the last uh, two years, we've gone through challenging time. First, the global re uh, inflation, then followed by global recession. Now, as we went through uh, this uh, two-year period, I think there were many things that we worry about. Uh, but as the labor movement, our main concern was on employment and unemployment. Basically, we were concerned that according to uh, the forecast, it's up to 59 million jobs are likely to be lost during this downturn. And, and at the same time, globally, unemployment is likely to go up to 7.4%. So at the beginning of the crisis, the labor movement, together with our tripartite partners, we decided to set ourselves some key performance indicators, KPI, to guide us as we go through this downturn. The first KPI we set for ourselves is to avoid a record retrenchment, try to go below the 29,000 set during in 1998 during the Asian financial crisis. Second target was to prevent a rapid rise in unemployment, bearing in mind that globally, unemployment is likely to go up to 7.4%, and we don't want to see that happening in Singapore. So that was the second target. And the third target is a more up when up. As an open economy, we knew that we will be very much affected by the downturn. But at the same time, we want to make use of the downturn to get ourselves ready for the upturn. So these were the three targets set at the beginning of the crisis. The tripartite partners, I think on the part of the government, uh, move, move, uh, make a move decisively uh, through the launch of the uh, uh, resilient package, 10.5 billion, which we are all very familiar. Now, since then, what has happened? First, in the areas of uh, preventing record retrenchment, uh, if you look at this diagram, you see that the first quarter was really bad. In fact, at the end of the first quarter, uh, we kind of, uh, uh, our confidence uh, was kind of shaken because at the rate the retrenchment was taking place in the first quarter, it will appear that the target we set to prevent 29,000 for the whole year could actually be broken uh, within six months yeah, because of the, the things are going. But fortunately, the tripartite partners, we work very closely together. Uh, instead of cutting jobs to save costs, we cut costs to save jobs. And I think at the end, uh, it does take effect. And guess what happened? I think second and third quarter retrenchment, you see a sudden drop, a sudden drop, a significant drop. So based on the current outlook, uh, in fact, uh, we are now fairly confident that uh, we should be able to avoid this uh, record retrenchment of 29,000 uh, by the end of this year. Uh, it's a full tick, huh? it's a full tick, and yet the rate only is only half rate, the other part is still white. Uh, it's, it means that, yes, we think we can avoid a record retrenchment for the rest of the year, for the whole year, but again, huh, nothing is for sure because you never know what could happen. But I think on the whole, we think we can, we can achieve that. Secondly, uh, is that the, as we did our best to save jobs, we knew that we could not save every job. So in other words, there will be workers who are affected huh, through retrenchment and so on. Now, so workers will be looking for jobs. So basically, our challenge will be in terms of how can we ensure, how can we ensure that for those workers whom we are not able to save, uh, from retrenchment, how can we extend them the, the full support that we can, help them to retrain and go back to the job market. So the first thing that we did at E2I was to set up a job gallery. Uh, this has not, never been done before, to the best of our knowledge. So the first thing that we did uh, during the crisis, uh, and with that job gallery at E2I set up, we were, able, we were able to then bring in job seekers. And then when they come to E2I, we look at job seekers, we did everything possible. Uh, to train them. If they don't have a skill, we equip them with a the skill. If they don't have the knowledge, we train them with the knowledge. If they don't have the confidence, like the Mr. Tan no, that you saw in the video, if they didn't have the confidence, we inject confidence in them. We help them to rediscover confidence in themselves. And, uh, and as a result of this uh, tripartite effort, the WDA, the MOM, the, uh, the NTUC, together with the uh, SNEF and our training providers, uh, we actually managed and succeeded in retraining, upskilling many job seekers. In fact, every month now, more than 1,000 job seekers 
successfully found jobs through E2I. So in fact, in the first uh, uh, eight months of this year, E2I alone has helped to place 11,242 workers, job seekers, meaning 11,000 job seekers actually found jobs after training, after job matching at the E2I. And we take into account the effort put in by the CDC under the CC network, in fact, altogether more than 20,000 huh, job seekers uh, were able to be, uh, go back to the job market. And uh, all this effort, uh, together with the effort of many other agencies, uh, we managed to keep unemployment in Singapore uh, under check with using job credits and, and spur. So uh, at the end of the second quarter, unemployment is uh, now 3.3%. So compared to the peak of 4.8% uh, in the year 2003. Yeah. So if you do look at this uh, total unemployment rate, if you look at the uh, resident unemployment rate, uh, same thing, uh, the unemployment went up to 4.8% and dropped to 4.6% at the end of second quarter compared to 6.2%, uh, the peak during the uh, 2003. So on the whole, again, Trapata Partners, uh, we believe uh, we stand a very good chance of ending the year 2009, uh, preventing this uh, record unemployment rate set in 2003. So, they are, so of, the, of the three, I think we are likely to have a two tick. Now the most important question is that what's going to happen to the third one? More up, more up. Have we done enough to get ourselves, to get the economy, to get our workforce ready for the upturn? So that when the upturn continues to gather strength, Singapore economy, Singapore enterprises, Singapore workers will be more up, more up. Yeah, I think that's a crucial question. If you look at uh, the response to spur, very encouraging. So, for example, companies responded to the spur very quickly uh, at the onset of the downturn. Uh, Murata, by the way, Murata was the first company uh, uh, to sign off with spur. And today, Murata is still taking full advantage of spur. Now, since then, uh, just looking at the situation e E2I alone, you see that the number of companies supporting uh, uh, spur has gone up very rapidly uh, in the, in the uh, first uh, four months or so, uh, from January to May, to May. By May, the number of companies, the number of new companies coming on board Spur, I think is now tapering off. Uh, so in other words, is we are beginning to see the sign that you know, during good times, uh, companies got money but no time, right? Then during downturn, they got time but no money. So what we did this time was uh, during the downturn, they got time but no money, so we supported with Spur. But now business are coming back. Now they need the workers to go back to work in the factory. So we're beginning to see that more and more factories, more and more companies are going back to the good old days or bad old days of uh, no time, no, no time for upgrading. And I think there's something that we're concerned about because back to the question, have we done enough during this downturn to get ready for more up and when up? Yeah. So the number of workers, I think, is still going through. Uh, so I think on the whole, Spur has a good start. Question is, can we sustain Spur? Why is it so, so important to sustain spur? Because we believe that we must continue this effort to upturn the downturn in terms of our ability to be more up when up. Now, here I want to sh share with you uh, uh, some companies. In fact, these companies are good examples. They actually started the whole process of getting ready to be more up when up right at the beginning of the downturn. And even though business are now coming back, they have not slowed down on their effort. So let's take a look at these companies. crisis struck, we were in a strong position. We could take decisive measures like the Spurs scheme and the resilience package. 
to help companies and workers to save jobs. In this crisis, our immediate priority is to see Singapore through. Our best strategy is still to help companies to stay viable and continue employing workers. We must keep up the effort to upskill and reskill our workers to become more employable and productive in a changing economy. NTUC is at the forefront of these efforts, working shoulder to shoulder with government and employers. We are a global city and when the rest of the world goes down, we go down. But what happens during and after the crisis, I think, says something about, about the way in which Singapore works. Not just the government, but our businesses, our unions, our grassroots leaders, how we work. We almost take advantage of the crisis. We see what opportunities there are to improve ourselves, to learn something new, to invest, to do R&D, so that when we come out, we don't come out in the same place. We come out higher. All crises involve some reshuffling. Some people move up, some people move down. We want to make sure we come out up, not down, and we will. So in the words of the uh, finance minister who is chairing the Economic Strategy Committee, we want to come out of the crisis, huh? we want to come to be up, not the same. Meaning that the Singapore economy as you come up from a crisis, the post-crisis Singapore economy must be one level up compared to the pre-crisis Singapore economy. And that's the reason why it's very important for us to do more of this. 